Hi folks, uh, hope everybody's okay. Uh, it's good to be with you. Hi folks, uh, hope everything's okay. It's good to be with you. This is Jason. And uh, love to everybody out there. I uh, just reporting to you what happened to us uh, yesterday. We took a team um, to Liverpool and City and we did a mission there and we had a great day. Um, we set off around about 10 o'clock, uh, a few of us in a car. And there was about a team of about six of us, seven of us, um, who, who connected together uh, in Liverpool, a few Liverpoolians, a few Mancunians. And uh, we had a big cross. One of our brothers uh, who uh, has got us all these T-shirts, so we're all wearing these T-shirts now as a team. And... Um, we had a big cross, we had a mic and table and literature, and uh, we had a really good day. Uh, it was just a tremendous encouragement, especially going up in the car with, with the brothers and uh, reading scripture together, talking about scripture, uh, building each other up. It was awesome. Uh, when we got to Liverpool, like I said, there was others there that, that rendezvoused with us and, and met with us, and uh, it was just a really good time being with uh, the brothers. I just really enjoyed it. Uh, some of the highlights, um, tracks, <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but we've got boxes and boxes of tracks and people keep giving me tracks and, well, I need them because we get rid of a lot. I give uh, evangelist tracks when they run out and uh, so thank you for all the literature that people have been giving me and, you know, uh, I've just got an, uh, I just received an assignment of about 15, 20 boxes of uh, literature. Uh, the other day from America and uh, some other more boxes um, from um, I think Switzerland and other places that people have sent me so I really appreciate all the literature that you've been giving me and giving us it's not just me but for for the evangelist in in Manchester so yeah the Liverpool mission was good um, some of the highlights the cross we had a great big cross uh, one of our brothers has made a great big cross and um, so that was good, and a lot of people stopped to talk uh, and ask questions about why we had a cross. Um, what else? Uh, some of the highlights. Uh, I had a, a chat with two kind of uh, Liverpoolian lads who'd been and stayed, uh, or one of them stayed in the Bible be Belt in America, and they were heavily influenced by uh, Hinduism um, and kind of saying that, um, you know, there's no real, they were very, very smart guys, really, really smart guys, very, very smart, and very gracious guys. But they were, they even though they were smart and they were gracious, they were really rooted in their kind of Hindu philosophy of, you know, it, it was kind of like just enjoy life, uh, just enjoy nature, just go out and love. And I, I try, I, I kind of asked the question, well, you know, is the truth, and basically they were saying uh, there is uh, objective truth, and then when I've cornered them, they, they kind of accepted that when they said there's objective truth, what they meant is it was their own private truth, and I said, you can't have your cake and eat it, there's either truth or no truth, and he said, well, it's, they, they said, well, you know, they, they saw it as their private uh, opinion. Uh, which we had a conversation for about three quarters of an hour and uh, we went all around the houses uh, they they doubted whether Jesus existed I gave them evidence for that Jesus existed then they equivocated and moved on to another topic and then eventually eventually I brought them back because they were saying I was they asked me how I got converted and I said you know the Holy Spirit began to convict me and 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 got me to see that I was a sinner and I needed the Lord. And they were saying, they were saying, ah, ah, no, no, no. When, when you said, when you said uh, uh, it was the Holy Spirit, no, 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 it was you, it was you, it was you. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's backtrack here, guys. You said to me that truth's a private thing. So why are you now telling me objectively that what I experience as the Holy Spirit isn't but it's just me so you're objectively saying that I'm wrong because it's not me it's not God convicting of me of my sin but it's me my own psychological uh, workings 
And then it, they, they kind of got, oh, no, 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 no. I, I said, well, you can't have your cake and eat it. You can't say there's, you know, the subjective truth. Uh, and now turn around and say say uh, that I'm wrong and, and, and whatever. You, you can't do that. That my experience is wrong or whatever. It's just your private opinion. It's not an objective truth. But they were very smart guys and they were lovely guys. And, and, uh, and, and I really love that. I really love talking to people like that. I had a great, well, we'll get back to that in, a, in, in another topic uh, in a minute because we're on about the Liverpool mission. There was a lady, I didn't get a chance to talk to her, but the guys got a chance to talk to her. And there was a lady that had kind of uh, was helping the homeless and, and she was walking past us, kept walking past us. And I knew that she wanted to talk to one of us, but she, she looked like, like, oh, I'm not bothered, I'm not bothered, you know. Uh, but she wanted to talk to us, and and eventually she walked past, and one of the preachers uh, got a chance to talk to her, and apparently she'd backslidden. And uh, the guys were able to talk to her and, and share the gospel. Then there was another lady who who was kind of into the devil and wondered why the devil wasn't redeemed and stuff like that. The guys had a chat with her. Another one of our guys had a chat with a Muslim. We did some more preaching uh, through the day. The more of our guys came, joined up with us. Um, some more Liverpoolian guys joined with us. There was a, a lovely uh, a black guy. Uh, I won't name his name. Uh, joined us from Liverpool, and he he preached lovely. Pre preached in a very humble, gracious way, and he, he had just a loving spirit about him. And then we had another guy uh, who who joined us. Uh, uh, quite a few miles away, 20 miles away from Manchester, who joined us, and a uh, fiery, fiery young guy, and he, he you know, he, he uh, really uh, was preaching, and 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 through that preaching of his, though, I got talking to a Catholic girl, and uh, she this lovely, she was a lovely uh, Catholic lady, and uh, and she was saying that you know what what are you Protestant or Catholic, and I said well we're Protestant, but. It's not about being Protestant. It's about knowing the Lord. It's about knowing Jesus, you know. And um, so I got talking to her, and uh, she says, you know, I don't follow the Catholic Church, but I follow, uh, I do have my own personal experience of God. And, and I, you know, what I said, well, I said, imagine a baby uh, in, in a hospital. Imagine a baby in a hospital, and they didn't feed that baby. What would you think? She said, it'd be dangerous. Yeah, but what if if they, the baby said or the family said, I'm, I mean, just hyperbole, you know, I'm not bothered. It doesn't matter what they think. I'm just doing my own thing. It's not going to be helpful for that baby. I said, and, you know, the baby needs milk. The baby needs feeding. And, you know, it's the same with you. You need spiritual food. You need spiritual food. You need God to feed you. And the spiritual food is the milk of the word. The word of God is the milk of the word. So... They, she she really uh, took a lot of literature and stuff. And then we had quite a few people later on in the day take literature. But that was a really good conversation. So pray for her. Pray for these other people that we've mentioned. Um, what else was there? Uh, I had a chat with two, two young people uh, who were really, really nice. Um, and uh, one of them does a bit of volunteer work with... Um, um, uh, some Catholic uh, priest, uh, retired priest or whatever, does a bit of work there. And they asked me, and, and I just told them about the gospel, and I had a really good uh, opportunity there. So, you know, the, the mission uh, to Liverpool yesterday was really good. Uh, I came back and I uh, did a Bible study. Uh, when I got back, uh, I didn't have time to have my tea. Just had a bit of toast, and within two minutes of having my toast and a bit of soup, doorbell rang, and then uh, folk came in, and we had a Bible study. And um, yeah, um, my I, I just want to talk about Israel and, and just a minute, and my my views on that, and what I think. You know, I'm from a reformed Calvinistic background. You know, you know, I I was. The, I, 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 that's where I get my strength, encouragement from in terms of teachers. You know, 
you know, it's the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. You know, the Bible is the word of God. And, and that's where we get our food from, the word of God, yeah? And, and I'm a gospel man. I believe in the preaching of the gospel, you know? But, you know, we all are influenced by different things. I'm influenced by uh, Calvinistic preachers. I, I enjoy um, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones and, you know, people like that. And, you know, that that's the area where I'm from and, and what I, I get a blessing. And, and there are folk that are around today that call reform theology as replacement theology. And... There are these divisions amongst God's people, evangelicals, on these issues and on the issues of end times. And I, I personally, I don't, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with with uh, Christians uh, not getting on with each other on these issues. I really don't. So, like, so I've got uh, Jewish friends who are Christian, Christian Jewish friends who who are anti-placement theology, which I think is a cold raid anti-reform theology. And then I've got reformed friends who who were, who were great, and sorry, I'll, I'll I'll answer that in a minute. I'll answer that in a minute. So, so my position is I I'm I'm influenced by reformed theology. But on on the on the area of Israel, I believe that God has a plan uh, for the Jewish people, and that one day they there will be a revival where there'll be an engrafting again of the Jews. I think that's Romans nine, ten, and eleven, and that's where I'm at at the moment. I, I need to do a lot more study um, on the issue, and I also need to do a lot more study on end times, such as a millennium, post millennials, and pre millennial. Sorry, it's pause coming through the door. A millennial, a millennialism. I'll just get the post. Sorry. Man. So yeah. Um, I need to do a lot more. I need to do a lot more study on a millennial, post millennialism, and pre pre millennialism, pre millennialism, and stuff like that. Um, I've listened to lectures and things like that, but I need to do uh, more study on it. But for me, I don't, I don't want to get sidetracked from preaching the gospel and teaching the word of God. And um, I just wish that Christians could get could uh, get on with each other on these issues. You know. Um, so just prayer that people would get on, but there seems to be a big division between uh, Christians who believe who are pro-Israel and then Christians who take a different position, who are not, who are not, um, who, who say are into different understanding of of the Bible on that issue. And I think that Christians should be gracious enough to agree to disagree. Personally, that's what I think on that issue. Um, so for me, that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm, I need to do a lot more study uh, on these issues, though. Um, anyhow, uh, if you're a Christian, uh, send me a message. Go on my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, jasonburnspreacher.com. And if you've got any thoughts or any study material or anything that you think I need to study on about Israel or about uh covenant with theology and israel or about um end time stuff a millennialism post millennialism pre pre millennialism if you've got any stuff that you think I, it would be good to study i know there's a good video on zwema here uh with uh doug wilson and john piper talking about uh end times different views on end time theology uh so i value um any material any anything uh you want to Skype me, uh, just send me my e uh, talk, tech, uh, get in touch with me through my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, jasonburnspreacher.com. And uh, send me stuff, uh, email me stuff. 
and uh, I'll be val- I really value uh, your input there. And maybe, you know, if you wanted to contact me and talk about it or do some studies with me and uh, we think it through about that issue, I'd be very grateful. Uh, but at the moment, that's where I'm at. I'm like kind of doing, um, we've got some studies in the house and we've got services in the house and people are coming and they're coming from different backgrounds. Uh, and it's it's difficult to, you know, it's difficult to know what to do because, you know, I am from a reform background and um, my, my friends that are from a reform background and yet other people come and, who perhaps don't appreciate uh, that background and and it, we're not at the place where we've elected elders or a pastor or things like that at the moment we're, but we are people are coming and uh, studying the word and we're getting into the word so just pray that that you've got to give me wisdom to to guide people in the right way because I, I I want to do the right thing if that's what God wants me to do um so just pray that that God would bless those bible studies and and bless the thing the the uh preaching on a sunday and and we're having great times we're having really really special times i think god's really blessing uh the services and and uh, there's just a real sense of of shalom of god's presence in, in the meetings really and so that but that's an issue that needs prayer about and I need to study more and um, you pray that Christians could be united on that issue or appreciate other I don't you know so there we are anyhow I've shared that with you but anyhow the mission in Liverpool was awesome it was awesome it was really good and the thing that I liked about it is the band of brothers you know we just really cared about each other and we're really uh in the word together you know i just love it i just absolutely love it i love getting on the streets i love meeting people i love talking to people uh on tuesday we had a brilliant day on tuesday that in manchester we had loads of people coming up to the table uh and i had a a good chat with a, a couple who were agnostics and i was able to uh share with them um about um, the gospel and uh, there was a lady a lovely lady she studied a lot of re- on religion but she became an atheist so I said to her I said look and I've, I'm doing this quite often Oops. <laughs> sorry about that I'm doing this quite often I said to I say uh, you know okay let, I give up all right we, we go with you I go with you let's stand with you so I stand with you in the ages. We give up the Christian faith for a second. Yeah, we. What have you got to offer? Dawkins said, "The universe is but blind indifference. That means a flower, a baby, a slug. They're all on the same level if they die." I'm. I'm not standing there. I'm coming back to my Christian faith. That is not a position to hold. That is just illogical because you're, you're, living with meaning and purpose and dignity, and yet your position uh, undermines that if you do go to it lo- in, in its logical conclusion. So that's where we're at. I'll just get the Bible. I'll just be, if you just, if you just wait for me a second. So, at the Bible studies on Thursday, at 7.30, on the north side of Manchester, if you're in, interested. If, you're in, if you want to come to a place where we're just getting into the Word, no messing about, we just get right into the Word and we study the Word, then, then come. You know, you get, contact me from my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, jasonburnspreacher.com. And uh, just text, uh, you know, send me an email and I'll send you the details how to get to here. We meet on the north side of Manchester near near Heaton Parkway, uh, around that way. Uh, we meet in a house and we have a good Bible studies and we have a service in the Sunday afternoon. So 
if that's something that you're interested in, if you're from a reform background, evangelical background, or any background really, where you where you really, really want to get into the Word of God, you, that you're tired of all the gimmicks and all the nonsense that's going about these days, and you just want it straight down the line, what's the Bible teach? Uh, we, we meet on a Thursday, we read a chapter, we're in chapter 11 of John, up to verse 27 at the moment, and we read through a chapter, and then we just discuss it, and then whoever's leading it, I lead most of them, but whoever's leading it will just share a few thoughts and, and give a few pointers. And, and we get into the meat of the word, and then on a Sunday we get into the meat of the word, and it's no messing about, it's just pure, solid word of God, and it builds you up, and it encourages you, and strengthens you in the faith. So if you're interested in coming, it's a Thursday night at 7.30, and it's also... Um, you know, if you're a non-believer and you, you, you're interested in finding out about Christianity and you want to get saved or born again, you want to learn about Jesus and stuff, or you might have a church and you just want to come to get refreshed, uh, you might be a leader somewhere, you want to come and just get built up and refreshed again, um, um, you know, feel free to come. It doesn't matter what background, charismatic, reformed, anti-replacement theology, whatever, just come and, and get into the Word and you'll be blessed. Not by me, but by God. All right? So I'm just going to read uh, John chapter 11, a few verses. I'll just give a few thoughts and then close in prayer. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with uh, her, whose brother Lazarus was sick, therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after th that said he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of the late sought to stone thee. And goest thou hither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that he may wake him out of sleep. Then said the disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall, we, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken, uh, taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Here's the verse. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Let us go unto him. So, you know, in chapter 11, the Lord was told about Lazarus dying, uh, who, who was dying. And the Lord could have got there on time and stopped him from dying, but he didn't. He took his time. And that meant Lazarus died. And therefore, Mary and Martha, were, uh, his sisters, were brokenhearted at the death of their brother. And the Lord could have just gone there, and it would have been sorted if it had got there on time. But he, he purposely stayed away and allowed this tragedy. But it was for their own good to bring glory to God and to bring a better result for the whole family. Namely, an understanding of who Christ is, that he is God. Because the Lord said, Lazarus, come forth. And that showed that there when the Lord stood before that tomb, he was confronting death. He was dead four days, Lazarus. And in ancient Jewish thought, they believed that after, uh, during a few days, the, the spirit would hover over the body. But after four days, the spirit would get fed up and leave and not want to come back to the body. So they believe that was dead, dead, dead on the fourth day. So, so the Lord is there, and he's facing this tomb. 
He's facing death. And he says, a Lazarus come forth. And in the ancient world, you know, the person who had the power of death was God. So when he says, Lazarus come forth, he's showing that he is God. He's showing his power, his glory, his might. And if you read the whole Gospel of John, that's what it's showing. It's showing the greatness of Christ. <coughs> I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. The, the guy who was blind in John chapter 9. It's God in Christ, that Christ is God. And he's showing the great, his greatness. He's showing his majesty. He's showing his power. And that's what the Lord wants for us in our problems and tragedies and difficulties. That we need to know that in, he, he works in his time. That his time is perfect. He, it might not be now he's stepping in, but at the right time he'll step in. At the right time he'll move. At the right time he'll, he will help us. And we've just got to trust him on that. We've got to trust him. That God knows best. He knows the right time. And not only does he know the right time, but he's a good God. And that's hard sometimes to believe when we're going through trials and difficulties. That if he's a good God, why do I have to go through this? If he's a good God, why do they have to go through it? But he is a good God. And we have to trust him on that. We have to trust him. That he will make a way. Paul says, my God shall supply all your need. It says in Corinthians, no temptation uh, is common to man. So it talks about, you know, I think it, let's, what is it? Uh, let's have a look. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Yeah, remember where it is. St. Corinthians. I'll just Google. Just Google it a second. Yeah, I was right. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. We go to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. One Corinthians 10, 13. It says, There had no temptation taken you such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So the Lord has promised you that if you can't bear it, he will make a way for you. And sometimes it's really, really hard. You go through really difficult trials and you wonder, well, where, you wonder, where is God in all that? But he is there, and, and he does undertake, and he will undertake for you. So I hope that's been a blessing to you. Uh, you know, like I said, we study every Thursday, 7.30, and we study. We're going through the Gospel of John, and we also have a su su Sunday service at 4 o'clock uh, at the house. If you, if you want to come, please come. Please bring your family, friends. Just, just come and, and uh, you know, if you want to know where it is, just uh, you can either text me on my phone. At uh, uh, you can get my contact on uh, jasonburnspreacher.com. Go jasonburnspreacher.com. You can contact me the, either on my website. You can go on my Facebook. Uh, contact me through there, or you can contact me through Twitter, whatever you so. But jasonburnspreacher.com is my website and you can text me uh, you can send me an email there or you can even text me uh, this my phone there if you want to if you want to text and you're interested in coming to the Bible studies and services and stuff 
uh, on the north side of Manchester. Uh, that's it, really. Uh, oh, one little bit. Um, the the um, just some advice for ministers. Uh, I know a couple of ministers that are struggling, finding it difficult, and I just want to give a bit of advice that will help you uh, as ministers. Uh, if you put the, this bit of advice in your work and 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 in and, and in your ministry, it will greatly greatly help you. A few things. Al Martin, a, a great uh, minister of the gospel, had ministers come to him and they were struggling and they were worried and they were finding it difficult and they go to him for advice about ministry. And, and they, they were just feeling like giving up in the ministry. So he said this, he said, number one, get your sleep. Number two, rest uh, with your family once a week. Three, go for a long walk. Four, four, um, have a good diet. If you do that, I promise you, your ministry will be better if you do those four things. God bless you. I'm going to go. Uh, time's running out on here. God bless now.